Technology can be distracting sometimes, other times can come in handy and save you time, energy and even money. If you're looking for apps to improve your experience on your next trip, wait no more, you are in the right place. Before we start, I just want to let you know that no app sponsored me actually, I would have been nice. And I did my own research and tested the apps in a two month trip across Portugal. Also, you can find every app in the description section below. So let's take it slow with leisure. The first app is Magic Hour. With Magic Hour, you can literally see what is the best time for you to go take a photo and what's the best, actually what's the best lighting for your next trip. So if you're a photographer, if you are a filmmaker, if you just shoot for Instagram, this app helps you find the best timing for your next shooting. Another really cool app if you are in a country with plenty of wines, it's Vivino. Uh, and with Vivino, what you can do is to scan different types of wine and then they give you details about a certain type of wine. Let's see. So I have here, go to my profile uh, and then I have 54 types of wine. Can you imagine when I've been to Porto, I was looking for port wine and I found dozens of fortified wines, which were really, really good. This made everything a little bit harder. Uh, because there are so many types of wines in Portugal, but you know, at least I had a starting point. A third app that I really enjoyed uh, with my partner is an app called Skyview Light, where you can use your camera from your phone and point it towards the sky. And then you can, you know, find stars, find satellites, uh, find different objects. It's based on AR. And then you can just see different um, planets, stars. It's Really cool. Uh, we used it a couple of nights and it was a nice icebreaker. You know, it opens plenty of conversations about the universe, about how planets were born and stuff like that. I was mentioning earlier Magic Hour and now I would like to tell you about another app that I used more. It's called Sun Position. And I used this app because when I planned my trips, we didn't know where we were going next, what, what our location will be. So you can point your camera towards the sky where the sun is and you can find the trajectory of the sun based on a certain hour. So then if you are uh, on a beach and you can see exactly where the sun will be setting. And speaking about nice locations, sometimes you need some hints to know which corner of different city or what city would be the best to just snap a really great photograph. And for this, I have another app that I found by mistake. It's called Pixio. I would also mention Google Maps here because you can press on different locations and you can see the ratings. If people say it's a great location, then you would go there. How it works, it's pretty easy. You just enter the app. So I, I can just zoom in and zoom in and zoom in um, on a certain location. And then I can see a really cool photo of that uh, particular location. You can then make your own list and then you can do your itinerary based on this. Another similar app that I didn't really use so often is, is called Spots. The difference between Spots and Pixio is that Spots was mostly made for cities. The UI is a bit nicer. It's pretty easy. You just select the city. Let's go to Berlin, for example, and then you can see different uh, photos taken by professional photographers. This is the good part about these two apps. Let's go to a second and hopefully very useful category, which is services. For services, I have an app that you might not know about it. It's called Air Allo or Air Allo, which is a new application that lets you install your own eSIM. It's very easy, it's hassle-free. It offers a, a wide variety of companies that you can choose from. We used this app like crazy in Portugal. We bought a couple of eSIMs um, because we ran out of internet from our careers here in Romania. The thing that you should pay attention to is if you delete your eSIM code from your application, then you will lose the access to the electronic SIM. And you have a lot of countries that you can choose from. If you didn't know about it, this is your chance to save some money. Another great, great, amazing app 
for all those who are traveling by camper vans, by vans, by cars, by, you know, wheels in general. If you're looking for a place to sleep or to relax or some, you know, a quiet place to stay, I recommend you Park for Night. This is better than Google. What Park for Night does is it shows you what are those parking places which are safe. They also have different categories like um, camping places, like this one, for example, which is a camping place with this icon or the P means parking. This uh, icon means that um, it's a great place for those with camper vans where you can wash clothes or you have different services. And this is amazing if you do this um, as a lifestyle. So you should definitely install this app. Let's go to another category which I really like and this is sustainability. An app that I don't have installed on my phone because apparently it's only available on Android, but I would recommend it with all my heart, is called Too Good To Go. And this app allows restaurants um, that have leftovers to put their leftovers on the app. They make a package for people to pick up and then you can buy those packages for really, really cheap. So the second app in sustainability category is called PlantNet. And PlantNet is more of a niche app. It allows you to take a photo of a flower or of, of a you know, leaf, a plant, a tree, something like that. And then it gives you the description of that certain plant. It uploads your photo to a database and then it gives you the details about the plant. It's really cool if you really love plants. So the third app in the sustainability category is called Happy Cow. And you might already know what this app is about. This is the perfect app for all the people who are not big fans of eating meat. We used it near a camping place and we found some vegan burgers. And oh my God, now that I remember, those vegan burgers were amazing. So I would highly recommend using Happy Cow. You have plenty of details. You have categories. You also have a map that you can navigate. So I'm in Cluj now and then I can see if it's a coffee place, if it's a restaurant, you know, just give it a try, play with it and see if it works for you. So let's go to the next category, which is banking. Two apps that we used like intensively because we had to spend money and unfortunately Romania doesn't have euros. So we have to always when we travel across Europe to exchange from our national currency to Europe. For that, we are using Revolut. So with Revolut, you can transfer money to people, pay by card. You have a physical card as well. You have vaults, you can save some money and stuff like that. It's a really great app if you are traveling to Europe. Another really cool app we use to track our expenses and see how much we're spending. It's called Spendy and we bought the lifetime subscription because i use it in my regular life as well so not only when i'm traveling but what you can do is to create different wallets and for example here i have the portugal trip wallet and i can go back to our trip uh, which was this summer you can see here what was our wallet balance monthly cash flow and where all the money uh, were being spent you have a wallet overview where you have a pie chart and you can see exactly what is your biggest expense where you have to cut off so yeah give it a try uh, the free version i think allows you to have only one wallet uh, but with lifetime version if you are into this savings and tracking expenses and stuff like that the, this is a co really cool app we're going to another category which is crucial for uh, any traveler, and that's transportation. It would be a pity not to mention Google Maps as my first app. We used it intensively uh, alongside Waze. So we used Google Maps to travel by foot or to find reviews about certain uh, restaurants or different places. And we used ways to travel by car and see, you know, live directions. I know you know them, but hey, they are there and they are very good. But there are some situations where you really run out of internet. So for example, in our trip, uh, when we came back from Portugal and we entered Romania, my career decided to block my internet. So I couldn't really access any mapping application. 
Fortunately, I had uh, an app and that app is called Sigic. Uh, the cool thing with Sigic is that you can download the maps offline and you can, I know you can do this with Google Maps, but with Sigic, you can download entire countries or entire, entire regions. And then you don't really have to worry if you downloaded a certain area or the entire map or stuff like that. It saved me a couple of times. Another great app, uh, if again, you're a traveler that loves going into big cities, it's called City Mapper. Unfortunately, you can use it only in big cities. So, so now I'm, I'm inclusion, it says you're outside our coverage, but uh, you have the cities right here. It provides the best possible routes and information for travelers. It is a navigation app that helps people get to their destination in the fastest and easiest way possible. City Mapper relies on OpenStreetMap, which is an, uh, an API, uh, to provide accurate information about public transportation routes, points of interest, and you know walking directions. The app also offers detailed maps for pedestrians, cyclists, drivers, and public transport users. It's great if you don't have a car. City Mapper is an essential tool for any traveler who wants to explore new cities or find their way back home without getting lost in the foreign streets or waiting at bus stops for hours on end. The user experience is really good for this app. I hope you found at least one helpful app. I know the internet is big out there and there are plenty of other apps. So what have I missed? Write your suggestions in the comment section below and I'll see you guys in the next video.